So I decided to take my spooky digital landscape and I'm going to add a tree to it. So I'm going to show you how I made this spooky tree without um, really doing too much drawing. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a rectangle shape. I'm going to make the fill black and I'm going to make the uh, the outline invisible. So it's just a, a black fill. So I'm going to make a few rectangles. I'll make them real thin like the branches and the trunk of a tree. So the only way you can make them is horizontal or vertical, but it's okay because you can rotate them later. So now that I have my trunk and a few branches, I can do, I can move them. And then I can edit and transform, rotate them. To make it look like a very rough sort of tree. They're each going to be in their own layer, so I'm going to have to switch layers to move them around. So now at this point I've got three different shapes and I'm going to need to go to the top shape and rasterize it. So I right click on the layer and I rasterize. And then when I merge them down, um, all three shapes will end up being rasterized. And now that they're rasterized, that means that they're pixel based, not vector based, which means that I can um, manipulate them. And it's more flexible how I can manipulate them. So I've decided to do edit transform warp. I selected them with the magic wand tool and now they're all in one layer. They're going to all be selected at once and I'm just going to start warping the branches. Sometimes warp can be a little bit slow. It takes a while for the um, your Chromebook to catch up with uh, accepting the changes. So you have to be very patient with the warp tool. But you can see it's starting to make the, the form of the tree look a little more organic. The one thing that I'm not loving is the ends of the branches look like they've been cut off. I want them to taper to a point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eraser. And... I'm going to use the shift key and when you click on a point and then hold the shift key down and click on another point you end up erasing in a straight line and that will give the ends of my branches a pointier look it'll look a little bit more organic and a little bit like somebody came along and cut the branches so now um i'm going to play around with a different um transform tools. Let's see. Let me select, deselect, and then I'll use the magic wand and select the tree again. And then I'm going to only play around with the eraser a little bit more, tweak the shapes a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to select again. I'll, I'll use the magic wand and select the tree again. And then I'll do edit, transform, and I can play around with the different shapes. Right now I'm doing edit, transform, warp again. And um, anytime I want to accept the changes, I just hit the check mark at the top. But you can also do edit, transform, scale, edit, transform, distort, edit, transform, perspective. And play around with just... Um, pulling the different shapes in different directions to get it to look more organic and more like a tree. Um, a little bit less digital and a little bit more um, like it, a real tree would, would, uh, would look. Right now I'm trying to give it a sort of a windswept, bedraggled look like a spooky Halloween tree. 
So once I'm happy with it, I'm going to, it might take a while to accept the changes. I'm going to hit the check mark at the top. Sometimes it'll freeze when it's got too many changes going on. The computer has to catch up with all the information you gave it. But I'm going to hide all the other layers and just have the tree layer showing. And then I'm going to use the magic wand to select the tree. And I'm going to create a custom brush. So I've selected the tree. And now I'm going to do edit. Define new brush. And because I have the tree selected, it added a new brush that's just the tree. So if you look among your brush menu, you will find it as your last brush. So when you, when you click on it, it'll allow you to add more little trees. Now I can use those for several different um, purposes. Um, I can change the size of them and add sort of little mini branches to my tree. I can... Um, I can also add smaller trees in the background. The only problem is that if I want to rotate them, I would have to do Edit, Transform, Rotate. That brush will only give me that same upright tree in just different sizes. So that may or may not be useful. Um, what I ended up doing was I added a few of those little tree, of those little trees, and then I selected the entire tree and I duplicated the layer and then I ended up transforming and rotating and changing the size of that and making another branch that way. So I ended up that the because the brush always had the tree in the same position and didn't rotate it, that it wasn't all that useful. So after playing with that around with that for a little bit, and messing around with the size of the brush to make um, larger little trees. I experimented with that. I decided to duplicate the layer and that gave me another branch to play with. And then I did Edit Transform, Scale, made it smaller so it seemed like a little branch coming off of it. And then I did Edit Transform, Rotate, and I brought it down to the rest of the tree and added it in to make a more interesting tree. So once I had that, I merged the layers. I didn't want that one branch to be on a separate layer. And then I decided I wanted the bottom of the trunk to be a little bit rounder. So Did a little bit of erasing on the on the branch because it looked like it was getting fatter as it went out from the trunk. And that's not what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to get narrower. And then I merge the layers down. I created a new layer by doing um, layer, duplicate layer, and then I flipped it horizontal. And then I transformed it by scale to make it smaller, and I rotated it. So in this way, I was able to just um, take the first branch I created and use it to create a much more complex tree. 
Eventually, I merged all the layers down so the tree was in one layer. And at first, I went with my lasso tool and I grabbed the trunk and I did edit transform warp. And I gave the bottom of the trunk a little bit of a rounder look. Make it look like it. The trunk was cylindrical and not just flat. And then I merged the layers of the tree down so they were all in one layer. And you can see what happens when I unhide all the, the different layers and how it looks all together in the picture. And ultimately I decided that I didn't want the tree all the way in front. I wanted it um, one layer back. I ended up changing that later. But I still had my custom brush, and I decided it might look kind of neat to use that brush to make uh, some smaller trees in the background. So I ended up messing around with that as well. You gotta figure out what layer you're in and whether you wanna add in a brand new layer or add your custom brush to an existing layer. So the farther away something is, obviously the smaller it's gonna be and you have to figure out what layer you're in what's in front of it, what's in back of it, and what the right sizes are gonna be in your landscape. can adjust the size of the tree by adjusting the size of the brush. you want to pick up a color from the middle ground or the background, you can use the eyedropper and change your brush color, or your foreground color. And of course, anything that you 
um, paint with the brush, you can um, transform or warp to adjust the size and distort it. Oh, happy creating.